Here's my Ultra 4 race car build from start to finish. It starts with the engine, transmission, transfer case, front and rear axles, and this piece of square tubing. Next, I built the link arms and link arm mounts, which will hold the axles in place. I'm using a cast iron NP205 transfer case out of an older Dodge. I have to machine the housing to accept the larger input shaft and bearing. This is arguably one of the toughest transfer cases that ever came stock in a vehicle. I rebuilt the transfer case with modified shift rails and put billet aluminum bearing retainers on it. Had to make special mounts for this transfer case to keep it from twisting too much with all the torque that this motor will put out. Now you'll start to see the chassis come together. I started by figuring out where I needed the shocks to mount, built wood brackets to hold them in place, and then bent the metal tubing to fit. While I watch the chassis come together, I'll tell you a little bit about the build. This is an Ultra 4 off-road race car with a mid-engine, twin-charged Cummins diesel engine. The transmission is a 47 RH. All of the internals have been upgraded, it has a larger output shaft and a manual valve body. The axles are GM 14 bolts, which are mounted upside down so that they spin in the correct rotation with a backwards mounted engine. I was lucky to be able to purchase these axles that my uncle took off of his Ultra 4 car. They're heavy, but they're extremely rugged, and they've already finished King of the Hammer several times. It has 16 inches of suspension travel in the front and 18 in the rear. The front shocks are 16 inch shocks that are mounted directly to the axle, while the rear shocks are 12 inch shocks that are mounted two thirds of the way down the trailing arm to give you 18 inches of overall suspension travel. I tried to offset the weight of the Cummins diesel in the rear by placing the fuel tank, winch, transmission cooler, and both batteries in the front end. I had to machine adapters for the drive shaft weld yokes because this size yoke is typically not used on this small of a diameter shaft. The drive shafts are made out of two inch, one quarter wall tubing. The small diameter and thick wall helps them to hold up better in the rocks than a typical drive shaft. Front and rear drive shafts are the exact same length, so I only have to carry one spare drive shaft on the vehicle. Now we strip the chassis and prepare for sandblasting and painting. This is the first time that I had everything apart, so I was pretty relieved that we were able to dismantle it quickly and easily with no major miscalculations coming to light. Now for some engine work. Got a new camshaft, larger tappets, and head studs, which required me to mill down the rocker arm assembly. The Cummins engine has the intake cast right onto the side of the head. I had that machined off and fabricated this intake to replace it. I had to surface it in the milling machine so that it would seal properly. Here it is with the intake and silicone tubing installed.
Now it's time to install the supercharger. The outlet piping is fabricated directly into the mounting plate. The air will flow through the intake piping into the supercharger and then it will be pushed through the supercharger and into the turbocharger, then through the intercooler, intake, and then into the engine. It will then come out of the engine through the exhaust manifold and power the turbine side of this turbocharger. Here's the Nerf bar fabricated and the lights installed. The last step is final wrapping the skins and installing the graphics. With a few suspension tweaks, it should be ready to race in the spring. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for future content and videos.